Hi again all, this is Dana. Uh, in this video I'm actually going to be showing you a little project that I picked up while I was in Europe. Uh, I was riding across uh, from France through to Belgium uh, to the Netherlands with uh, the Wounded Warriors Canada team on our uh, annual bat battlefield bike ride. And uh, we actually had one day of uh, just resting in Bruges, Belgium. So luckily for me, there was a needle workshop literally right next door to my hotel. And so I'm one for buying souvenirs of things that I can actually do something with. So I found this little kit. This is a little uh, front page of it. And zoom in a bit. Yeah, so this is a uh, Hardanger or Hardanger. I think it's Hardanger. I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, it's basically pulled work. So, uh, or sorry, pulled threads. So you can see here in the pattern. Just gonna try and zoom in a bit. Uh, there's actually like little bits that have been cut away, and then uh, bits that have been overstitched quite a lot. Things like that. It's uh, a Danish uh, traditional craft, from what I understand. And so I thought it would be an interesting little kit to buy. It was about six euro, so about ten Canadian dollars. And I thought that'd be a nice little souvenir, something for me to play with once I got home. So the kit came with uh, came with a needle. It came with uh, the the fabric, and it came with a bunch of floss. Uh, this is actually kind of neat stuff. It's different than normal embroidery floss. It's almost like a really fine string almost like a really silky string um, you don't actually untwist this at all like you would with embroidery floss where you're using only a certain number of strands this one the instructions say to use the full thread as is and then here's the instructions so it's got two sides this is for assembling the little pouch at the end like how you would stitch it all up and whatnot so I was having a bit of an issue in the sense that I've never done this before and I wasn't sure whether this kit would be good for a beginner. Uh, I think it's assuming that you have done some things like this before because there isn't really a legend to say, you know, for example, what the black uh, boxes mean, what uh, this kind of symbol means, things like that. But after a while of looking at it and kind of looking at the, the pictures of how to do certain stitches, I kind of figured it out. So it turns out the black is actually the areas that are being snipped away. Um, these kind of funky looking black ones here that have like almost look like an X. It's because you've got these little extra knobbies that are going to be stitched down here when the threads are all kind of wound around. Things like that. And then these ones here, the little star thing here is actually this radiating stitch down here. Uh, right now I'm working on, I'm just sort of working along this edge here. I'm going to work my way up across and then down and then work inside. I'm not sure if that's how you were supposed to do it, but that's the way I'm going to start. Well, one thing that was kind of confusing me was in the pattern it says one square is two threads in the fabric. So originally I thought that meant that, uh, I'll show you the fabric closely. You can see it's uh, got sort of quite defined holes in it, but it's also got, I'm trying to get it closer, it's also got very fine double threads. So you can see each section is actually made out of two threads. There's two threads running this way, there's two threads running this way. So they can actually be separated. It's a little bit tricky to do, but they can be separated. Uh, so when I did start the pattern, what I was trying to do, I'll show you my little, it's kind of a bit cut up and banged up because I was kind of fiddling around with it. But I was trying to actually go into every, instead of into just each hole, I was actually trying to go into the hole, into the double thread, into the hole, into the double thread. So it would be a really dense stitch. And I'm still not entirely convinced that's not what you're actually supposed to do. I think that's what the pattern's indicating you're supposed to do. But I tried it, and I kind of went up to here and then cut the thread. Um, it seemed too dense. It seemed really, really hard to actually uh, see where the the little um, the double stitches were sorry, the double threads where the um, center of them was, just because the threads were so dense, it was almost kind of pushing everything up a little bit, making a little bit more bunch, so it was actually pretty hard to see where to put my thread next. So then I realized probably, for this one anyway, um, even if it's intended to do this densely, uh, I'm actually going to do it double the thickness, so instead of um, whole double thread, hole, double thread, things like that. Uh, I'm actually going to be just using the holes as my um, stitching holes. Um, so in that sense, uh, for each, like these are, I'm just going to try and focus a little bit. 
Uh, these are all blocks of five stitches, even though it's two grids on the actual chart. The way I'm going to stitch it is going to be five holes across, five holes deep. So that's the way I'm going to do it. And as you can see, I've started a little bit already. And it's not nearly quite as dense. You can kind of see the fabric peeking through a little bit between the stitches. I actually don't mind that so much, especially because it is white on white. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if that's how you're supposed to do it, but for me this seems to be the easiest way to do it and not go blind and not go crazy, especially because this is the first time I've tried this type of needlework. Um, and this way too, I actually will use the entire piece of fabric, whereas before it was going to end up maybe being only about this big total and then fold it into three to make the little, make the little, make the little pouch. Um, and this, by doing the piece a little bit bigger, it's actually going to use up this entire piece, so the actual flap, so it should be roughly about yay size when it's done, which which is a decent size. You know, if I'm actually wanting to use it for something, that's actually a much better size for me than, you know, half of that again. So I'm going to keep working on this. Um, one mistake I did make when I was first starting up here and just trying it um, was that I didn't realize that this outer edge here on the pattern is actually a blanket stitch, this sort of outside edge here, which is this here. So I realized that, and so I had to start again and and uh, starting to do a blanket stitch, so I'm working my way up and across like that. So I'll just uh, do a little bit here so you can s sort of see what I'm doing. So I'm at... So I've gone... I just realized a mistake I made, but that's scaled. I'll pick it in a minute. Yeah, see here I didn't go over five more before going up and over, so I'll just take this part. But for the meantime, I'll show you. So let's assume that I'm doing this section right here, these five threads here. I'll show you that. So I've got my thread ready to go. I like blanket stick to actually. It's a quite a, a nice pretty stitch and it's quite easy to do. Sorry if I'm fiddling around. I'm trying to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to put this needle in and then I will focus it. So put the needle in and up. So yeah, so it's going into the first hole and then out the fifth hole. Try and focus that a bit. There we go. Like that. And then same thing. Like when I was doing the double stitching, like when I was going between each individual stitch, these threads just seemed a little bit too dense for it. So it was actually pushing over so you actually couldn't see the stitch, like where your needle was going to go into next. Like you had to keep pushing the threads out of the way, which kind of didn't seem like that was the right thing to do. Okay, we're going up again. So you do this for five and then you turn the corner again. That's about one, two, three, four, one more. And then I would turn the corner again. Yeah, so that's set like that. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to... Uh, yeah, sorry, I got my little fuzzball cocoa in the background. A little painting I did for a while ago on Art Rage. It's a very cool art application for iPads. So yeah, so that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, I'm not sure whether I would uh, continue to do these kind of... Um, pieces in a traditional style like the white on white I'm thinking I might uh, once I kind of get a little bit better at these stitches is work these kind of stitches either into cross stitch to do some detail uh, bits off to the side or as part of the pattern or even incorporate black work and uh, the pulled threads which I think would be really really beautiful I've seen some samples online and it looked quite neat actually like combining the two types of, uh, of embroidery so yeah, this is what I'm working on right now. God knows I have a million other projects to keep working on. I'm almost finished my big Michelangelo cross stitch that I've been blogging about and uh, talking about. Uh, but I just thought I'd try this little project kit and just see how I go with it. Spend an hour or two fiddling around. And so yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for now. In case you're wondering, uh, I've just used these threads here as to mark my center as the pattern stated to do was to mark, mark the center. So yeah, that's 
all I'm working on for now. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, please feel free to tell me that I'm doing it completely wrong. I'm sure I probably am. Uh, as I said, the instructions aren't overly clear if you've never done it before, but you know what? That's fine. I mean, it's just I'm just experimenting with it anyway, and it was, you know, like I said, all of six whole euro. I think I can cope if I screw it up royally. So yeah, I hope you all have a lovely day, and talk to you later. Bye for now.